John, I really appreciate you taking the time to catch me up on all the innovation Qualcomm's delivering today and the R&D work that's paving the way towards 5G and advanced and 6G. Let's maybe start with this tight integration of 5G and AI. I think with 8 Gen 2, we got a really good look at what is possible, but extrapolate that forward. What does that combination really mean? It really underscores the fact that AI is moving right onto the device. So we've had cloud AI processing for a long time now in an industry, but at the same time, the devices are getting so much more capable. So what that means is things can be processed locally at the edge, right on the device. And so even the decisions of what are you doing on device, when are you offloading processing to the network, can become more intelligent. And things can be done on device now that were never possible before. And so we're getting towards this 5G advanced era where things start to get really interesting. Qualcomm announced the X75 and acknowledging that we're still in a pre-standard era, we've got a very clear look at what that's going to be. So maybe you can just talk to me a little bit about X75 today and how you see 5G advance evolving. Yeah, with 5G advance beginning in release 18, it's really that first down payment on what's coming in the second half of 5G. And so what's so great about the X75, it's having those capabilities to evolve alongside and take some of that release 18 functionality into product. And so what's so great about 5G Advance is that next level of performance, enabling those products, those new use cases. And I also wanted to catch up with you on uh, RedCap, this reduced capability uh, version of NR. You all recently announced the X35 as well. So just give us an idea of how you see the internet of things and maybe even the economy of things evolving. Yeah, X35 really is a game changer. So it brings that IoT to 5G itself. So it's based on release 17 red cap, as you said, and it's that new thing that's enabling lower power, lower cost devices. So as a module, it can go into many different types of connected products. That enables a transformation of the industry as we're looking broadly at how will 5G evolve into new IoT applications, new wearable applications, new types of mobile broadband. And so it's really taking it into all of these different applications at a different price and power point than was possible based on the higher capability, you know, based on the full 5G itself. And I've heard some conversations here in the stand that are around RF sensing, and I think right now the focus is maybe around how this enables the network to sort of optimize itself more effectively, but what is the big long-term picture if you think of a ubiquitous connectivity that's also sensing? Yeah, when we look at the radio signals that are core to wireless, what's so amazing about 5G, it's a wideband signal. It's very capable of huge data rates, gigabits per second. At the same time, it can use that spectrum for RF sensing to understand the physical environment. So a good example is that is the positioning that was built into release 16 and 17 and continuing. That positioning framework evolves and RF sensing is another big step into that. Qualcomm's also announced the Qualcomm Aware platform enabling new IoT use cases engaging in vertical industries. That's a great example in how we're taking a step back as a full industry saying, how can we better solve some of these problems that require connectivity, that require logistics, edge processing, putting it all together in an end-to-end -end framework where there's application programming interfaces, APIs, to a new developer community. So it's about enabling more participation in the ecosystem to bring actual value. So to your point on economy of things, it really is about bringing these new economies, different types of scale, to these environments that previously didn't have that level of end-to-end -end scale. And then John, I've got to ask you about 6G. As you look towards 2030, what are some of the big questions that you and your colleagues are working to answer? Yeah, when we're looking towards 6G in that 2030 timeframe, it's about how far can we push things like artificial intelligence in the air interface, not only on the device and in the network, but how do we design a more AI native air interface? How are we going to use spectrum more efficiently? Not only FDD and TDD, time division duplexing, but driving into new types of full duplex or subband full duplex, where when the device transmits, when the network transmits, we can better optimize that for new network performance and device performance efficiencies. At the same time, we're also looking at how can we evolve using new bands, things between seven and 10 gigahertz, 10 and 15 gigahertz. How can we bring that to the cellular ecosystem and prove out some of that technology? So even though 6G is a few years ahead, it's something we're already researching on in a big way now because we're driving that into the upcoming 6G standards, which will begin in a couple years from now. Lots of exciting stuff on deck, lots of exciting stuff here today, John. It's always great catching up with you. Thank you. Likewise, great to talk with you.